All right, so in that last one, we used the post save signal to actually do our git or create Stripe, and then now we have to set up our email or set up to send an email for email confirmation. Um, note that the post save signal can work with any model, any model whatsoever, as long as you set it as a sender. And there's also another one called pre-save that you can also work with any model. And then you just set the receiver function first, and then that's how it can all connect in just like this. And I also started showing you that there is a way to do this using git or create. And we're actually going to make some changes to our user Stripe model as well as add a new model in here so we can determine whether or not the user has actually um, confirmed their account. So the first thing I want to do is actually change the Stripe ID to being null equals to true and blank equals to true because this will allow us to make a little bit of a cleaner signal here um, or at least a cleaner function overall. So now that we've got this, let's actually run our schema migration for it. So if you go in here, first thing I want to do though is actually I'm going to remove these, go back to its original state, and do python manage.py syncdb. If I run syncdb and I do not see this being managed by self, then that's going to be an issue. We want to make sure that this is already set up by self. Um, and it should be, we have our migrations here and initial migration as well. So it should already be ran by South or at least controlled by South, which means that we can make changes to our models, at least as they are in the database. All right, so we see that it's not synced. It says use migrations, and that means that we need to use South. So going back in here, I'm gonna redo and put this stuff in here and now do Python manage.py schema migration and it's gonna be accounts.auto. Uh, um, and then we wanna disable the backward migration. That's what we're gonna do here because we're adding it to being, allowing it to be null, uh, even though we do not have a default specified. Um, so I'm gonna say three as in def, uh, disable backwards migration by raising an exception. And now I do python manage.py migrate accounts. All right, so now we can actually do a git or create call uh, for our specific user because this can now be null. All right, so going back into our signals, we can now do new user stripe created equals to user stripe dot git or excuse me dot objects dot git or create user equals to user. Right, so now this is going to either give us a true or false here or and the user stripe uh, instance here all right so if created all we do here is if created we just move that up and voila that is a much cleaner function than what it was this still works it still looks okay and it will work as far as um if we did not change our model, but we did change our model, so it does work like this. So let's actually go into our app and see what it looks like. So python manage.py, run server, and accounts, we're gonna go into register, and abc2, abc2, at gmail, one, two, three, one, two, three, join, and it looks like it did it. So let's just double check to make sure. Admin, log in, user stripes. We've got a none here. And what happened? Well, we created the customer, but we didn't associate the customer to our new user stripe. So new user stripe dot stripe ID equals to customer dot ID, like what we did up here. And then now we just do new user stripe dot save. So that was the one little disadvantage as to what I did there. So let's go ahead and delete it. And this is where testing comes in. You find little things like this that don't work. So let's go ahead and delete these users. Go, all right. And let's try that one more time. And we'll do abc, abc at gmail. 
join. All right, so now it should have created it. So let's go into our admin, user stripes, and there it is. So we now have our Stripe customer ID there. All right, perfect. So that is a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to follow as well than what's going on here. So now that we have this, let's actually create a model. And this model here is going to be um, our model for whether or not the they have activated their res, uh, um, registration. So we'll do class user registration confirmed. Instead of all of that, let's just say email confirmed. How about that? Email confirmed, and we do models dot model, and it's going to take a specific users, just like what we've done before, and then we're going to say confirmed equals to uh, models dot boolean field default equals to false. And then we also might want to do some type of hash um, that would allow us to um, actually have some type of unique key. So we'll just call it hash key equals to models dot char field max length being 200. And we are going to leave it just like that. And then we'll define our Unicode. of self and we'll turn self dot confirmed and we'll make that into a string so it's going to be true or false okay so email confirmed so this is just confirming whether or not that it has been confirmed the email has been confirmed or not um, and then we have a hash key that would relate to that confirmation and the char field for the hash key we might allow it to be empty because maybe we just delete the hash key after it's done, after it's been confirmed, just in case there's no like overlap at all. So we'll say null equals to true and blank equals to true. Uh, actually better yet, we will set it something to like confirmed once it is confirmed. All right, so now that we've got this, let's actually put it into our database. So we'll do Python manage.py schema migration accounts auto and then python manage.py migrate accounts. All right, and back to running the server. And now into our signal, uh, we are going to do a git or create a, for our new model, which is email confirmed. So we're gonna import it. I just copied it and now I'm gonna import it in. And now I'll just do email confirmed is created equals to email from confirmed objects get or create user equals to instance which or well we could just call it user um, so why did I say is created versus created is because we already have a object called created so we want another one for email confirmed so if the email is confirmed we'll say if is created so why don't we just call this email is created just so there's no confusion whatsoever if email is created then we need to create our hash and then we need to send email all right so we can create it in this signal or we could create it on a git or create so if it's created we could do it within the model itself as well and that's actually something that we're going to do so this is going to take a few steps. So the first thing that we're going to do is create an instance method on our model to actually send the activation email for that specific user. Now, hash key is probably not the greatest name for it. Actually, it probably should be activation key um, just so we know what exactly what it is when we look at this. So let's actually just change that. And I'm going to do a schema migration pressed up a few times. Oops. Got to get rid of that last part. Do the schema migration auto and just to change the activation key. All right. And just like that last time, we're going to do three. And now we have to specify a one off value um, for our existing columns, which we don't have any existing columns, but we will specify one. And I'm just going to say uh, empty. 
All right, so Python manage.py migrate accounts. Essentially what this would do is set all of the table values for the old, um, for activation key, if there were ones that were already in the database, this would set them all to be empty. All right, so we go ahead and migrate accounts. All right, so now that's all done. Okay, so now that we've got this activation key, let's go ahead and create something that's actually gonna send this activation email. Um, so first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, a few more imports so we can actually do, um, actually send out an email in a way that's just a little bit more user friendly. So we'll do from um, Django.template.loader import import render to string this will make clear this will make sense in just a moment all right so we're going to be rendering the string and then we also want to import send email so let's put this above here so from django.core.mail import send mail so this is going to actually send an email for us all right so we put that underneath here all right, so now we've got render string and send mail. So we're pretty much ready to go as far as creating our actual email activation. And what we're gonna do now is down here, we're gonna create an instance method for this and it's gonna be define activate user email. And it's gonna take in itself. And then we're gonna actually send the email here and render a string and then below this we're going to define email user so an a instance method for emailing the user is just going to be a little bit easier for us so if we do self subject message from email equaling to none and keyword args we'll see how this works um, shortly and then what we're going to do here is we'll just do send mail. So this is the actual function that's sending the email and it's going to take subject message from email and then self, oops, comma, self dot email. So self being the user. So it's going to be self dot, sorry, self dot user dot email. So it's sending it to the user and then any other keyword arguments, if there are any. Um, all right, so let's discuss this email user. This is so we have an instance method. So anytime I wanna email the user, I can do that by going on my user object. So in our signal, uh, I can go to do this, I could go print user.email confirmed send mail and then I can send you know the subject and all this stuff so this would actually send it to assuming that they're confirmed it'll actually send them an email based on that so it's going to send it through the confirmed and it's going to email the user right here oops I said send mail didn't I I meant to say email user here email user and then all we would have to do is include message subject and then our from email which is something we will do here shortly. Or we're gonna send it down here, that is. All right, so back into our model, um, we're also gonna send it here. So email user. So we wanna send an email here, and then we're also gonna wanna actually set up this render to string. So this is gonna be, after all this stuff, we'll do user. The subject will be the subject that we want to set. So let's just set a subject being subject equals to activate your email. All right, so subject's the first thing. Message, we're gonna to have to set a message. So message equals to something here. And then we wanna say our default from email, which would be settings.default from email. So we'd actually need to set this. So let's go into our settings to see if we have it set. And we do not. 
So this is where we will actually have to set up our email in the next one, but we'll at least put the default from email here. So some email at gmail.com. We're gonna actually have to confirm this email uh, later. So we'll set up the actual way to, to actually send email shortly, but at least we are gonna set up the, uh, the activation email stuff prior to actually setting up the ability to actually send email. Okay, so now, We've got this, we've got our message, or at least what our message could be. And so all we're gonna do here is we have to do this thing called render to string. So we can set the message equal to render to string, and it works just like render to response or render. So it can take a text document. So let's just do accounts.activation um, message dot txt activation message and then our context so our email context or the message context that is so context equals to we'll do our activation key and it's self dot activation key of course being this right here and then we are going to set like maybe our url or the activation URLs, which is something we still have to set. So activation URL equals to activation URL. All right. And then now we have activation URL equals to some URL. So let's say HTTP colon slash slash local host 8,000. And then percent S will be our, act then we'll just say accounts activate and percent %s being string substitution for self.activation key. So this is the activation URL. So this is what's actually gonna be sent through with our message. So um, I'll explain a little bit more here. This should look a lot like a view, um, at least up to here. So let's actually look at a view. Imagine if we were doing this inside of a view. Well, we've got a context here, we have a document, and then we've got stuff that we can set for the context. Same thing's happening here with render to string, but this time it's now going to be rendered as a string instead of a response object or uh, like render is actually sending a response object. So it's actually loading the HTML um, where this is just loading a string and it's putting our context into that string. So let's actually create this activation email. And first thing we need to do is in our templates, we need to make an accounts folder. So new folder, accounts. And then inside of here, we're gonna do a new file and we're gonna save it as activation message.txt. All right, so now that we've got this activation me message, Let's just go ahead and print it out. We'll say, hello, or write it out, excuse me. Please activate your account here. And this is where we write the activation key. Thank you. And then your management. Okay, so let's actually take a look at this now. Now that we've got this all set up, let's take a look at it. I'm going to ignore send email for now. And what we're gonna do is print out the message and just see what that looks like after we actually run this activation, activate user email. So I'm gonna do it on, let's do it on our login view right after login. I'll do user.email confirmed dot activation underscore email. So I'm gonna do it on an email that's actually created already. All right, so email confirmed, activation email. So it's gonna print out all this stuff up. Oh, it should be activate user email, not activation email, excuse me. So activate user email. All right, so this is actually gonna run that function and it should show us uh, what's the result? So let's actually log into our account. So I'm going to run the server. OK, 
go into our admin and we want to make sure that we have our registration uh, model in there so our email confirmed model so let's go into our admin here and we'll put email confirmed into our admin All right, so now back into our admin, let's just do a little refresh. Now we've got email confirmed. We can worry about how that looks later. Add email confirmed. I'm just gonna add jmitchell3, and then I'll just add some random activation key for now until we actually figure that one out. All right, so email confirmed is false for that user, right, as it should be. So now we've got this stuff. Let's actually test it out because we set it up in our view. And let's go ahead and log out, log in, log in. So now after the user logged in, it did log in, as we see by the logout up here. Look back into our terminal, check this out. All right, so now we have our activation email actually working. So this is what the message would be if we actually emailed it to them. Um, so let's go back into looking at that message and see what we went wrong here. So I didn't use activation URL in the message itself. I used activation key. So let's change it to being our activation URL here. All right, so now we've got that. And you could even say hello user. So we could say user here if we wanted and do self.user.username. Uh, we don't need those curly brackets there. That is context stuff. Okay, so now we have self.user. So hello, user. And then it's going to say, please activate your account here. All right, so we've got that going. Now let's run that one more time. All we got to do is log out and log back in. Of course, we need to make sure our server is running. Close out our server. Run the server one more time. Okay, it's running. And we log out the user, log in. J Mitchell free, 3, log in. Logged in, terminal. We see now we've got this actual link. So what this link is gonna do then, we will actually go to that address and then activate it. Uh, there's obviously still a few more steps that we actually have to do before we can do that. And that is setting up our Django project to actually send email. And then we have to set up a way to create these activation keys, which we don't have yet. And we want them to be relatively complicated. However, we have most of it finished. And you could also change the way you want your subject to be. You could have it work the same way as this right here. Uh, that's going to be completely up to you if you want to change that in any form or fashion. And then again, you could also make all the context a little bit smarter as well. Um, and then we, so all we'll do in the next one is actually set up our Django project to send email. And then we will um, jump into creating a activation key. So actually creating the activation key and then setting up the URL to handle said activation key.